Good morning everyone and welcome back to the How I series. Today I wanted to discuss how I met my girlfriend. So some of you incels watching this and guys who follow me who are trying to change your life uh, might be curious how does anyone meet anyone these days? Uh, and the question is a good one and the answer <laughs> is so I met Desiree in 2015. So how people are meeting, you know, how people are meeting their girlfriends in 2022, that's a question that I don't think I can answer. <laughs> but I can tell you how I met Desiree and how I wound up dating her. So originally, if you turn the clocks back, I think that uh, I started by deciding and choosing to love myself and take care of myself. I had went vegan, as I have told you guys in other videos, I went vegan in 2013, which is a part, part of loving yourself. It's not just taking care of the animals, it's also treating your body better because you're not feeding it death. <laughs> you know, not eating death. <laughs> eating the energy of uh, abuse and um, fear, all low vibes. If you really tune into the vibratory frequency of your food. You'll see what I'm saying. So let's start with loving yourself. At some point, I started listening to music specifically by <clears throat> a female artists that were singing to men, love songs. So that was something that I don't do. You know I me, mean? if you know me, you know me, I like, I listen to metal. I play metal sometimes, I listen to like rap for fun. Uh, but for the most part, I would say I'm a rock and metal and metal guy. You know, I've been in bands, I've played drums, I play, I play my own music, you know what I mean? So at some point I decided to listen to music by females um, singing to their cisgender partners or suitors potential they're wooing men you know so I did that I did that because I wanted my mind to go to a place of well okay you've you've been able to love yourself now um, I wanted to shift gears to what would it be like for somebody to love me the way that like is actual love because some of you may know I've been in a lot of uh, been in a lot of unhealthy relationships, and uh, if a ship could be unhealthy, I have been in that ship. <laughs> but anyway, uh, at, at some point, I started feeling like this vibe of like she's out there. The one, the one is out there for me. So you can laugh all you want, but you can look up in 2014. January, February, and April 19th. April 19th, 2014, I wrote something on my website called I Know You're Out There. And I just, while I was making this video, I typed in adamjosh.com, I know you're out there, and you'll see it. It's on my website. And it starts with my sister suggested that I, instead of getting frustrated with creating online dating profiles, I post a list of what I'm looking for here in a woman to my website. So at, that, at this time, I had been through making dating apps. I had met people from dating apps. It wasn't working. I had given up. I had been single for about a year. I had decided the rest of my life, I'm just gonna be asexual. I'm not attracted to anybody. And I am just gonna live my life as a single man who loves himself. I was at that point for about a year before I met Desiree. But in my mind, I had this feeling, and in my heart, I had this feeling of like, she's got to be out there. So I wrote down on my website the most ridiculous things about the woman who's out there. And this is what I wrote. And tell me, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, you know Desiree. I didn't know her at this point. Didn't even know she existed. Didn't know who Desiree was. This is what I wrote down. I know you're out there. To be frank, 
if you're the one, you're going to meet my sister, and there's a 98% chance she will see right through you, as clear as a window, so we might as well just get that out of the way. Now, without further ado, here's what I'm looking for in a woman. I know it sounds crazy, and honestly, I stopped caring about that a while ago. Number one, you're a vegan, at least a vegetarian. You're a Pisces. You aren't sitting around doing nothing with your life. You like art and music. You have family values. You're ready to handle an OCD workaholic Scorpio who also plays music. You sing and you would love to sing songs with your man, that's me. You would like to have kids, but no rush on that because we both know it has to be right first. Marriage? Let's see if we like each other first though, okay? You have a healthy distrust of your government. You like to travel. We're going to be doing a lot of that. You wouldn't mind helping out here and there when needed at a business or two. You love kids. You don't want pets unless they're outside and properly taken care of. You don't smoke. You're not a drug addict. No potheads, pill poppers, or meth addicts need apply. And you aren't a heavy drinker. You don't celebrate Western holidays such as Christmas, Easter, Halloween, or New Year's. I wrote, you're not a heavy drinker. Because at the time I was like, oh, if she drinks, you know, that's fine. Even now. We've been together for, you know, seven years. And, uh, you know, I've seen her drink twice, three times. And I wrote, after all that, does this sound like you? Cue laughter. Send an email to adamjosh.com. Or if you're a little more daring, shoot me a text. And I sent a fake, I, I gave a fake number. It doesn't even work anymore, so don't bother trying. So, yeah. I wrote what I thought at the time was some like crazy thing about the one who was out there. I think in my heart of hearts, I felt like this person could be out there and I'll wait for her. And I figured I would be single and just living my own life until then. So what wound up happening and how I met Desiree was Almost a year after this, I got a message on one of those dating profiles that I had made and forgot about. Like I had given up on the dating people from dating dating apps. So I got a message on OkCupid. And I was checking my email and I said, oh, you have a message from OkCupid. I was like, well, whatever, I'm not doing that anymore. But I checked the email and I said, thank you for sharing your music. And I was like, did I share my music on OkCupid? Okay I have so many songs, right? And so I was just laughing. I was at work when I responded to these messages. I was in a frame of mind where I'm like, I don't care. This person is probably not real. So I was of the mindset, like, I'm just going to joke around. I'm not going to take this seriously. I don't really care. So I wrote back something like... Um, are we married yet? The person who was talking to me on the other end had a fake name, fake photo, so I didn't take it very seriously. The person writes back, and it, the person wasn't using a real name. The person writes back, well, you already made me cry. So, I'm, you know, in these three messages back and forth, you can see, I don't know whether we're both joking or whether we're both being serious. I don't know. And then I wrote back to that. And we hardly ever see each other. <laughs> so it's already like a marriage in that sense where I'm making you cry. We don't see each other. All right. We've already skipped to that. And... Um, that was how Desiree and I first started conversing and uh, she was using a pseudonym and I asked her, you know, later, why were you on OkCupid? And she said she was using a pseudonym and a fake profile, fake Abby, all that. Because she had a friend who was dating some guy who they suspicious, um, they were suspicious of, wow, they were suspicious of him because he... I was fooling around on the side and using dating profiles to fool around on his girlfriend, which is totally lame. And so they were doing some detective work to see if he would 
as to who he was fooling around with and if he would fool around with random strangers. And they caught him, and just while they were in the middle of this sting operation, uh, she came across my profile and uh, decided to click a couple links and listen to some music. And apparently, my <laughs> my music tongue punched her in her soul. <laughs> You know, I guess some of my music, some of my music could do that. I don't think a fresh globe would do that. My song, a fresh globe. You know, I've done so much, so much work with music over the years. So many songs. So I don't, I don't even know what song she was listening to. She told me later what song she was listening to, and some of them are like. Um, more depressing songs, I would say now. Well, I gave all I could to exit this life and I poured out my soul just that in your... <laughs> I know my songs. I know my songs. I know them. Um, I don't know it's called My Angel. You can look it up. That was one of the first songs that she listened to. But anyway, what wound up happening was I decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to call this chick. I was sitting at my office over on... Uh, the other end of town and I said okay well I'll talk to her if she wants to talk to me because she's at least interesting so we chatted back and forth on the phone five minutes into the conversation I'm thinking about my list and I'm like are you a vegan I could hear kids in the background so I already thought this is not gonna work this is not gonna work so let's just skip to the chase are you a vegan and she's like got to the chase lady and she says yeah i am a i am a, a vegetarian and i said are you a pisces and she's like yeah i am a pisces actually and uh, i said that's crazy i hear these kids in the background uh what's going on with that and she goes oh well uh you know i have these two kids one is one and one is three their father died in a car accident go on that, that was literally like I, I I didn't I didn't plan for this eventuality so go on he, he's dead you say so there's no man ever going to be in this picture and you already have children hmm hmm so yeah the more that we talked the more that we found out more about each other and then I I realized she was a lot closer in proximity to me than I thought because, you know, you talk to people on the internet, they could be anywhere. It turns out that she, through a series of, okay, you're in Canada, okay, you're in Ontario, okay, you're in Niagara, we whittled it down. We were actually on the same road, literally the same road. We were literally on the same road, I kid you not. I was on this side, she was on that side. I could walk to her place in five minutes and we never met. We just were strangers crossing in the night. So then at one point I went to her place and uh, yeah, we chatted for a while and we became friends and I was friends with her for many months. I didn't try to jump into her pants. In fact, I didn't, I kept telling her this isn't going to work. I just want you to know I'm not going to be a father to these kids. And I didn't want Desiree to think that, you know, you found this man who's a business manager who's going to take care of you and be your sugar daddy. I didn't want her to think like that because... Uh, that is not true to who I am, and that is not the case. I am, I'm, I am a sugar daddy now, for sure. I am a, a daddy of sugar. <laughs> but that's not who I am. And if I have, a, if you know me, you know that girls who try to live off of me exclusively, uh, that doesn't work with me. And I, I, like I wrote in the in the third point here, you're sitting around doing nothing with your life. That irritates me when people just like loaf around because I grew up with parents who are on welfare. My mom has never worked. Uh, my biological mom has never worked. So it, it irritates me when people sit around and do nothing with their life. So it would not be cool with me to just support people endlessly that do nothing and are not productive. That would bug me. Maybe when I'm 70, maybe when I'm retired, I don't know, I'll feel differently, but I still feel the same. But that's how I met Desiree. We were friends for months, maybe maybe six months before we ever crossed the line into this might be more than friendship. And then uh, we crossed those lines consensually and uh, in, in full adult glory. <laughs> and we've been together ever since. So 
Um, we've traveled, we've done all the things that I wrote about in here, and we are still doing amazing things. Bought a house together, raising these kids who are 12 and 9 now. So that's how I met Desiree. I hope that you can meet a life partner and the person of your dreams as well. Take care. Follow me on Twitter. Have a great day.